Hey there, my name is Dimitri, and in this video, we're gonna dive into our client portal template here at NoLoco. It's no secret that many of our users really enjoy working inside of our NoLoco ecosystem via the client portal. You can clone it extremely quickly. It has so many different amazing features, and it allows you to create something for not only clients, but yourself to manage those clients extremely easily. In this video, we're gonna walk through how to clone the client portal template and show you how you can view it from not only the administrative view, but also from the client perspective as well. So let's get started and dive into this template. It's very simple to actually clone a template. All you have to do is go to portals.noloco.io after you're logged in and you'll see this client portal template. Simply press use template and then select what your data source would be. Where your data is going to live is going to be important to you. So do you want it to live in NoLoco? or sync with Airtable. Let's select no local tables, and I'm gonna type rise productive client portal and press next, and it's gonna start building the app for us. So in just a few moments, it will actually create this for you. It's really cool how quickly and easily no loco creates these for you with just a few clicks you have an entire usable client portal so just to reiterate there are two different user roles here they're going to be clients and then team members team members would be someone on your internal team where they can see the clients page in a very unique way if you notice within here there are a myriad of different clients that you can go into and inside of them they have their own specific details like their status different notes about the clients, access to info about their payments and the various projects that they're a part of. And you can find any specific client within here. So typing in elite event planning, for example, would showcase those two to you. And you'll notice that this is actually grouped by active and inactive. If you're viewing this from a perspective that you are a client or team member, you're going to get obviously two different options. But if I view it as Daniel Young, who's a team member, and I go inside of the workspace, you'll notice that I have the ability to search, add clients, and then make any editable adjustments needed. So say for example, this Grandview hospitality management, right? This client had some different updates needed to be made to their logo or their address. I could add new logos here, replace this, delete it if I wanted to. Say there were somewhere else in the country, I could absolutely edit this, add any specific notes like, they are basically <laughs> the US government <laughs> because this is uh, clearly somewhere in um, and off of Pennsylvania Avenue. Clear there and off of, because this is obviously by Pennsylvania Avenue. So if I press done here, you'll notice that the note section is updated. And not only that, I can add new payments within this, filter it to specific statuses like awaiting collection, i.e. what have they not paid, the collected, items so what they have paid and then those themselves have data within it respectively so billing we have the details and we have the projects of the client as well whether we want to add new payments which has a form built out and is automatically going to be connected to that client or we want to add projects which are automatically going to be added to this client as well and can be assigned to specific leads this is all built out in a way where we truly have everything we need from inside this client portal from an internal management standpoint. I think this is really important to know because some client portals are kind of hard to navigate, but it's pretty amazing that you're able to click into one of these and have all that information confined into that client page. And if for any reason you have any clients that aren't active, I like the fact that it's segmented into active and inactive so you can easily view your old records of inactive clients while also having the active ones at the very top here. Now, you'll notice something else that while going inside of the clients is a great way to view it. If you are a specific person, like for example, if I'm signed in as Lily Nelson here and I click on projects by lead, you'll notice that it's grouped into the different people who are assigned to different projects. And that's great for like an overall manager view. We do have this button to add a specific project once again you would be able to select a certain client pick a status and all the similar things that you saw in that other portion of the client view for having a form to create a project however you'll notice as well that there is a my projects view and this one is from my perspective even better because anyone on your team can log in and see projects by you know me if i'm the person logged in and we'll see here that any different project 
that you're assigned to is put into a couple different categories, planned, in progress, and completed. So we can go in and see the different project details as well as the tasks associated to it. A very similar form process exists here for adding a new task, which obviously would go into that project due to the amazing way this is built. And all of these different board views you see for things like project, they have really easy functionality where I can press this, where I can click on this and drag it into a different section of the board. So I'd know if I am Lily Nelson, that this is a planned project, whereas this is in progress and what I want to focus on before this one. And these are the ones that are completed. And if I ever need more info on the client, I can click on the client right here or the specific project itself. I can click on it and check out all of the different tasks within it and the description context and much, much more. Or as a manager can go to that projects by lead internally and see how everything is going across each team member. And now if you did want to edit this project, you absolutely can. If you're a team member, you can change the lead, add project files, adjust the client, start date, end date, all that sort of thing. But also if you wanted to click on this, this is a action button that'll allow you to end the project. Now this will automatically set the end date to whatever day you pressed it. Today's July 9th. That's when the date's showing and you have the ability to sign right here or type it out or upload a signature. So I'm Lily Nelson in this case, and I would press confirm and that would showcase that there is project sign off and move the status to completed. If we go back here, you'll notice that the cybersecurity overhaul is right here. And we then could move that content strategy development into in progress since there is nothing else in the queue. Now I do want to make a huge note here. That's very important. There is actually another item to note, which is actually if I press start date, similar action button where it moves it to end progress. And that is a great option because it sets it to the start date and then end for that as well. Once again, would be on Lily's shoulders. Now, why would I say it like that? The reason being is that these action buttons can only be seen if, as you'll notice here, the visibility is set to start and end is only applied to that project lead. So those buttons for start and end actually only apply to that team member that is logged in and is that lead for this project. So they're in charge of setting the start and end dates and marking when it was complete, which seems like a minor detail, but it's great for data consistency. But let's pretend like I was uh, actually Emily Davis, who is a client in this instance uh, for this company that's showcased called Keystone Construction Services. Now you'll see inside of this project page that this Emily Davis client has the ability to edit the uh, description here, but they don't have the ability to edit these other fields and they cannot set it as end. That isn't the case of the team member to be able to do that. Uh, there is a task addition functionality so clients can make sure to add new titles and descriptions. And then as you can see, the internal team would sort out the rest of the items like due date, status, priority, etc. And if we go back to the projects page, they then can see from their perspective as a client, what are the projects that are currently being worked on and what has been completed. These are both sectioned off into different toggles and the client has the ability to export and import using CSV and they have the ability to add and create new projects to assign to our team, which I think is awesome. This form is so simple to work through and I like how it gives you that level of functionality for clients to add new requests without much extra capabilities to make edits to important fields. And of course, they also can see corresponding tasks that are then associated to the projects that are mentioned right here and showcase the different data like due date, the different properties like priority and who it is assigned to. And all of that, as they click inside of it, they can edit the title and description as they could earlier, as well as the project name and description as well. And they can navigate easily back to the project. This is all a great workflow and really lets them interact with their projects, their tasks so easily. One of my favorite things about this is that it showcases two right here, which means there's two projects associated to this client. There's two tasks associated to this client. And as you can see here, there's three payments associated to this client. So a client would definitely be able to see that they do have a payment that is waiting collection. So within this, they're just going to get notified that they have to make a payment. And from the team member side, alternatively, going back to Lily for a moment, you'll see that in the payments dashboard, you can see all the different payments made by customer, 
the total number of payments that have been made across everything. And this is an aggregated view for that internal team to see all of the payments across everything, aggregate that data rather than, you know, kind of viewing it like the client does. And of course, as showcased previously, there is gonna be a tasks view, but all of what we're doing here is essentially having a task view or payments view, projects view that is limited for the client that's logged in, but fully viewable for the team member and has an aggregated showcase of everything for most of the views outside of where the my projects view for team members allows them to see just what projects are assigned to them. And then of course, the clients page also has that internal side of it where under it is also a client dashboard that showcases how many active versus inactive clients they have, how many payments are made across everything. And you can change this to your heart's content, filter it as much as you want, like to only active clients to get a vibe of how current business is going versus the previous business that you had in active wise. And then of course, there is the handy dandy users page, which you can add new team members to, or you can assign them new task collections and leading project collections as well. Now, all of this is amazing. And one more time, just to reiterate, this view for clients is awesome, where this homepage can bring them to any of these ones that you'll see right here that they can view. And on the other end, if you do it as the team member, you'll see pretty much has everything except for uh, there is the user view, client view with dashboards, and then the payment dashboard and projects by lead and my projects views. Now, how do we necessarily make a change to this so that it actually fits your data? Very simple. You'd go into the data and you'd essentially adjust this data in no loco or Airtable with the respective users that you want and have from a client standpoint, from a team admin standpoint, as well as the different clients as well. We wanna make sure that you easily update this data. So we've done the best to make the system as easy as possible. Whether you're using no loco or another data source, you'd go in this backend and make adjustments to the requisite data here, invite the proper team members and clients in order for all of this amazing setup to work to its full fruition. So if you're interested in adding this to what you experience in your day-to-day -day life and making client interactions so much easier, please make sure to check out our client portal today. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.